Hopefully you're set up and ready to go from the last lesson. If you had trouble at all, you can go to the link in the description and grab the code from lesson one and just get started with me there. And uh, we're going to jump right into lesson two. Now I would open it up in VS Code or whatever your code editor of choice is. And then in your local terminal, go ahead and type npm run dev. That should spin up a dev server. You can see it's very basic. It just has the word Astro in it. So let's actually talk through how you work with pages in Astro. Now there's really only one directory that's required. It's this SRC directory because this is really where Astro does all of its magic. Inside here, you'll notice that there's one other directory and that is a pages directory. And that's once again required. And then finally, you have an index.astro page. This is your home page, and it's also required to have anything up and running. So with these three things in place, you actually have your first route right here at index.astro. Now each page in the pages directory is a route. So for instance, if I were to come in here and I were to just copy this and I were to paste it, I could just change this over to something like about. And now if I come over here, all I have to do is add about right here and you'll see it actually changes pages. Now it's hard to tell that. So let's actually change this to um, about and about like that. And now you can see if I were to go back, it goes back to Astro. So pages are automatically going to be routes, anything inside this directory. The pages directory can hold things like markdown files or even MDX files, obviously Astro files as well, or it can hold HTML files if you want to write it like that. But Astro files are basically HTML files, so I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Maybe just if you were carrying stuff over from a previous project. If I come up here, you're going to notice as we kind of get started here, that this looks very much like HTML. And that's because if you're using the Astro components, you're basically writing HTML. Now, because Astro's whole thing is no client-side JavaScript by default, even though you can template stuff out, you can see a little templated thing out here, it always generates plain HTML at the end of the day. Now, if you're observant here, you'll notice, and let me close the sidebar, that there's two sections. There's this front matter section, and then there's everything else. And while you don't have to use Astro components, you can use things like React or Vue or Lit or Svelte or a lot of those frameworks to actually generate your UI, the Astro components themselves are, are really powerful. And at the end of the day, they're basically HTML. You don't have to remember any weird things like class name or something like that. You just write HTML, and then you can template stuff out with the Astro syntax as you need to. So how do we use these two sections? Well, up top, you can actually write any JavaScript you want, including doing imports or top level await. All of that is available up top. Down below then is where you template things out. So for instance, I can come up top here and I can just write JavaScript. So let's say something like I've got a string here, we'll call it Bob, all right? And then maybe I have a number and I'll give it one and let's see what else we might have. Uh, let's have an object and inside here we'll have my name and I'll actually just point this to string now let's point a number to my num, to num, and then let's do uh, one more. Let's do something like uh, favorites. We'll make this an array where I have Astro and then like CSS and JavaScript. Okay, something like that. Now what I can do is actually use all this JavaScript up here to then template things out down below. Well, how do we template things out? We use bracketed syntax. So all I have to do is come inside here and I could say something like, let's see, my string. And you'll notice that I'm actually getting this autocomplete from that VS Code extension I told you about in the first lesson. So if I save this here, you're going to notice Bob shows up right over here. I can change this over here then to like num, and that should show me my number one. I can also come up top. What did I call that object? Oh, I just called the object like this. So it's an object itself, and then I can just reference any property on that, like name. And as soon as I do that, you see it points back to string. So there we go. I can also come in here and grab favorites, and then just grab like, I don't know, the the second thing in the array and now i get css so all this templating is possible because of this front matter up top here so any javascript you write up here including like functions or little helper things that will like transform dates or all that kind of stuff we're going to do throughout this entire series you can then template out down below in this bracketed syntax now in addition to writing javascript up top you can actually also write javascript inside of these brackets so i could come in here and say like two uppercase you can see now CSS goes straight to uppercase. Now, sometimes you'll have things that you want to be optionally present. So for instance, let's come up top and say something like uh, const is uh, visible, and we'll set this to true. All right, now what I might wanna do is make this entire thing visible or not visible depending on the state of this right here. Well, what I can do is wrap this whole thing in brackets like this, and I'll move this up. Let's come down this way, and all I have to do is come in here and say is visible. If that is true, and here I'm going to use a logical and, then I'm going to say, go ahead and show that. 
Now, for some reason, if is visible is false, so if I come up here and change this to false, now you'll see that it disappears. Now, I can also say, hey, if it's true, show this. If it's false, show that. So let's come over here. Let's say if it's visible, then let's just make this a normal ternary. And I'll say if it's visible, do that. If it's not visible, maybe let's show the very first thing, which would be astro. So there I've got CSS. If I come up top here and I change this now to false, now I should get astro capitalized. So all of that is happening based on this JavaScript I have up top. Now, of course, I can simplify this a little bit if I want to and just, let's see, I could come inside here and do my is visible here. And if it is, then I could grab the second thing. If it's not, then I could grab the first thing and we could get rid of all this. And now that same thing should work. If I come back up top here and hit true, then it should show CSS. So you can simplify it even a little bit more because in this case, they're both H1 tags. All right, so you can write JavaScript just like that down below as long as it's in brackets. And then you can reference anything up top here. Now note that anything in brackets or anything up top here will never be client side. That's Astro's whole thing. You have to actually opt into client side JavaScript and I'll show you how to do that soon. Now, if thinking about this front matter as kind of like server side stuff and down below as what's generated is confusing to you or the bracketed syntax is new to you, don't worry, we're going to be doing this all throughout the project, so you're going to get really used to it. Now, one thing we haven't talked yet about is how do you actually loop through data like these uh, arrays right here. So I'm going to come down here and inside bracketed syntax, what I want to do is reference, first of all, my object and then grab my favorites like that. And then I want to loop over these. Now, Astra uses a JSX style syntax. So what we can do is just loop over these things with a typical map in JavaScript. So I can take each one of these items and we can just call them items like these. And then I'm going to return here in parentheses. And that's important. If you do this in brackets, this is not a function. You're actually returning from here an object. And then Astra processes that. And maybe we actually make this a list item just like this. And I can just say inside here in brackets, once again, item like this, and then close this out with li. Maybe then we should wrap all of this with a UL like that. And if I press save, you'll see I get all three things listed out here, Astro, CSS, and JavaScript. So all I'm doing is mapping through these using normal JavaScript, again, inside these brackets, looping through each item, and then returning something from the item. So you can see how quick and easy it is to loop over data very quickly using the Astro syntax. Now let me show you one other thing that we're not going to be actually doing a lot in this series because we're not going to be fetching stuff from outside, but you can actually use data from anywhere. So let me get rid of all of this here. What I'm going to do is actually request some stuff from a, a service called JSON placeholder. So what I'm going to do is do await right here, and you can do top level await in this top section because it's actually all wrapped in an async function kind of behind the scenes. So I'm going to now fetch like this, and I'm going to fetch an endpoint. Now if I come over here, I've got it pulled up right over here. You can see this is just kind of mock uh, data right here. So let's go ahead and grab, and I'm going to actually use a different endpoint. I think I'm going to grab their posts endpoint, and then I'm going to limit it just to something like five. All right, so we'll just grab the first five posts. And when I do that and I save it, let's move back over this way. You see I'm getting yelled at because I, I left all this in here. So maybe let's leave that for now so I can use that. We'll say const data will be my await res.json. Now what I can do is use this data and loop through it down here below. So let's get rid of all this and just say data like this. And now I don't want to actually loop through the item because that's the object I'm getting back. Let's take the title of the post. And as soon as I do that, you see I'm actually getting back looped data here from a server directly in Astro. Now, when I build this, it will actually run this at build time. And at build time, it will take all this, insert it into here, and give me plain HTML at the end of the day. So everything up top here, once again, is only done on build. It's essentially like server-side script. Think about it like that. Down here below, this is what will get output as plain HTML at the end of the day. Well, I hope that's a helpful kind of tutorial of how to use data within Astro itself when you're using Astro components. And that's really what this series is going to focus on using the built in tools in Astro. At the end, I will go ahead and show you how you can set stuff up with React, um, but you'll have to stick around to the end of the series for that. Now, let me go ahead and strip all of this away so that we have a fresh, clean start. And I'll get rid of all this as well. And I want to point out just one more thing. If I open the sidebar over here, there is another folder here, and that is the public folder. Now, anything inside this public folder is essentially untouched by Astro. You can see here that it's basically at the root of the server. So all I have to do is reference it like this. And at the end of the build, it will assume that this, anything inside this public folder, would be basically at the base level of my site, the root level of my site. It's also true then that Astro touches nothing inside of here. But at the root level of my server, you can see here this favicon is showing up right up top here, and that's because it's referencing this in my public directory. 
this would be a place to put something like a robots.txt file or something like that. Everything would go inside this public directory. And this is actually where we're going to place our images as well as we move on through the series, and we'll reference them at the base level of the site. You should be well on your way, though, to understanding how Astro components work with data. Again, we've played with strings, with numbers, with arrays, with objects. We've grabbed data from the outside and then templated all that out in our HTML. At the end of the day, everything below these three brackets, everything below the front matter, will just be turned into plain HTML. And that's the beauty of Astro. All right, I'll catch you in the next lesson.